Hi, it is Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. As you may see, I'm not smoking. And I've decided to put it down for now. Uh, I don't know how long. Um, in my mind, I want to wait until I've accomplished all of my tasks, which is a significant amount of work. But we'll see. I could end up smoking tomorrow. So, um, but I, I'm doing it because even though, you know, life's been manageable with it, uh, it's definitely had an impact. Uh, it, I, I don't do as well at poker as I did before. Um, even though, I'm still pretty good. Um, I, I'm sure like other areas of my life over the long run can improve and uh, it'll be good for my lungs. It'll be good if I don't forget any waters running and smash my head on the fucking ground anymore. Uh, and it's just good to be kind of aware and cognizant of what's going on around me. I've been reflecting a bit this evening and thinking back on this spiritual journey that I've been on for uh, really since 2007. And I was thinking about some of the early days when I was in these situations that were just very dull and I'm kind of sitting there and I guess I was, I don't know if I was doing my dues or putting in my time or whatever, um, some very painstaking and boring uh work that god had for me back then and i look at my life today and again it seems painstaking and rather dull and i think that's why i get high uh is i i want some additional experience some uh something to look forward to something to kind of break up the monotony because i mean i try watching TV shows is it's hard for me to find one that is entertaining and there's so many biases and there's so many bad beliefs and just false ideas that are just so predominant among pretty much everyone and I mean different people have different ideas but they're all <laughs> fucked up um even in the freedom movement I keep seeing these people oh <laughs> let's worry about a central bank digital currency like they just I guess they just haven't studied economic history. They don't understand that when a currency hyperinflates, their government always tries to make a new currency and it never holds value. And you need actual production. Um, you know, it's just, you can't just create something from nothing. And, and people seem to be convinced that the government can do this. All they can do is counterfeit, but you have to have actual real production. Um, you have to have, have, have real value to counterfeit, and they're, they're not going to have any once this credit bubble collapses. So anything people are counting on the government to do, whether they're Trump supporters or Biden supporters or Gaza supporters or Israel supporters, whoever the fuck they are, they need to understand the government ain't going to be able to do it because they ain't going to have any fucking purchasing power. They ain't going to have any fucking purchasing power because their, their credit's collapsing. And once their credit collapses, the entire co economy collapses, and they're not going to have any tax revenue either because you have an anti-competitive marketplace. So we're going to get freedom or everyone's going to fucking starve. Just like I've told you for fucking years, nothing's changed. So, um, but even though things are kind of boring and I watch a lot of, it's like all the videos, it's just everyone's just saying the same shit. No one's got anything new. No one's got much of any, anything entertaining to offer. And I look at the same old tired books on my bookshelf and it's mind numbing. Um, and it makes me want to get high. Uh, I accept that it's just, this is what life is right now. And, Hopefully someday we'll live in a fun and exciting world uh, where cool things happen and where cool people exist and where uh, joy is obtainable, where fun is obtainable, where 
um, all the good things that seem to lack in this world uh, will exist. But there's a process to get there, and, and there's some big steps that need to be taken. Uh, I realized today how uh, I, I, um, you know, I expressed something today and someone heard I was expressing some pain and the pain of myself, the pain of my son and, uh, the person who heard, I guess they didn't like something about the way I said it, uh, or something about what I had to say. And so, you know, as is so typical among humans, they completely discarded compassion for the sake of trying to silence me, trying to shut me up, not have me say whatever thing they didn't want to hear. Like somehow if I don't say it, it's not going to be real. I don't know. But uh, it just, it made me sad, I guess, because this was someone I was thinking maybe they, Maybe this was someone who was pretty cool, but, um, you know, compassion's a big thing for me. It's actually probably the biggest thing for me. And, you know, there are some people who have been compassionate towards me, but they're very rare and it's, it's very noble. It's very heroic, but it's not very common, uh, from my experience. And so that was what it was and i guess it just it made me realize how far away i am from just a lot of people and just how maybe futile it is to even try to convince anyone that the government's not the wonderful thing that they think it is uh it really seems to me like we're just, we're really going to have to wait until this collapse really picks up some steam. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the more steam it picks up, the more unrest there's going to be, the more, the harder it's going to be to turn the ship around, um, the more society will deteriorate. But, you know, I can only do what I can do and... I have to trust, you know, I, I offer myself to God. I, I continuously make that commitment that God will put me where he needs me. And, you know, maybe it won't be the most interesting, exciting or fun experience for me. But, you know, he's at least shown me some hope. He's shown me my books uh, he showed me these solutions to all these fucking problems. And now it's just a matter of when is the population going to be desperate enough to listen to someone who they really don't disagree, don't agree with. And no matter who they are, it's like, there's just these fixed belief systems that just don't ever adjust themselves. And so... I think we just, we got to get to this point where people just give up. They give up on the idea that government can help them. Um, and right now people just haven't given up. You know, a lot of people still think it's a good idea to own U.S. bonds. A lot of people still think that the U.S. government is a worthy debtor, that they're somehow going to get paid back along with all the other trillions of bonds and it's just it's delusional but it, it's what people believe and i think until that bond market collapses until they see their portfolios going to zero until they see empty store shelves and all the other things we've been saying will come about what can i do i i i, I comment on these videos but it doesn't seem like, I don't feel like anyone listens. I don't feel like it has an impact. And maybe it, maybe it has an impact that I just don't see, but I just see people just digging, digging into their, their preconceived notions and 
all this just futile and useless effort. And I mean, these Gaza protesters, it's like, I mean, I support the full disestablishment of the Israeli government, but I'm not going to go trespass on a fucking university to fucking protest it and get myself fucking arrested or thrown out of school because um, I needed to do that when it's not even going to have it make any fucking difference. I mean, <laughs> Israel ain't backing down. They are determined to genocide these two million people. And uh, it looks to me like they're getting pretty close, man. And uh, for me, it's... It's, um, it seems unlikely that anything can be done to save the people who remain because they need somewhere to go. That, and until we get a free land, until we get what I'm describing, where each landowner gets to decide who, who they allow on their property and can give refuge to, there ain't going to be anywhere for these guys to go. So, um, I think for a lot of people, it, it, it's more merciful to, to leave this world um, and, and to to enter you know, God's domain than it would be to stay here and to suffer for longer. Um, when you have no food, you have nothing, and everyone you care about is dying off, and you're getting fucking attacked and bombed, I mean... You know, who wants to live like that, man? So, I guess in one sense, this is sad or whatever, but I'm a realist, man. And, um, you know, this isn't the first time today that someone's tried to silence me or, or told me to shut up because I said something they didn't like or I said it in a way they didn't like. And, um, my the thing I've discovered is that most people in this world seem willing to do that. Seem willing when even people who present themselves as open minded, who pretend like they listen to everyone, you broach certain topics, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to fucking listen. And I've been socially isolated. I've been kicked out. I've been dismissed as a friend from people for saying things that were true that they just didn't want to hear. And I'm just not a guy who's willing to like pretend that the truth about what I feel isn't the truth for the sake of approval. Um, I want real connections. I want real friends and it's a lot harder to find those than it is to find people who will be friendly as long as you toe the line and you, you don't say anything they don't want to hear. But I, I want authenticity. I want uh, someone who accepts me for who I actually am. And there's not many people I've met who seem willing to do that. So, you know, I just, I put one foot in front of the other and I, you know, I got my kids. I mean, fortunately, my kids are two people I, I, I do get along with, um, even though, I mean, at times they can be overbearing at, at times they can be demanding. And I, I feel like it's just their demands are more than what I have the capacity to give them. Um, they're still my people. They're still cool. And, um, you know, the thing I was talking about today was how my son gets bullied in school and his teacher bullies him and the other students bully him. And that's, that's just kind of how it is in public education. There's a lot of bullies. It's, it's a structure that incentivizes bullying and it prevents the bullied from being able to escape. And it's, it's a very cruel and evil structure. It's something I experienced. Um, I suffered a lot of pain growing up and it's tough to see my son suffer because I don't see 
why he should have to, man. He's a cool kid, and I care about him. And he's real smart, too, you know. And even though I haven't always been the nicest guy to him, he's listened, and he's paid attention, he's learned things. And he's got a pretty good grip for a guy who's only eight years old, you know, and I'm pretty proud of him for that. And uh, it kills me to feel like I failed him in ways, you know, I wish I had a, a wife who could homeschool him or the funds to send him to a, a better school. Uh, I, 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 I wish I, I could have done better for him. But I just, you can only do what you can do, man. So, best thing I can do right now is try to stay sober and try to make it through one day at a time. And I'll tell you, I've lived, I've never been a huge fan of the one day at a time fucking phrase, but right now, that is how I'm living. I'm not even thinking about I got to get through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm just thinking I made it through fucking Tuesday and I got a couple more hours till I go to bed. Um, you know, hopefully I can get a good night's sleep tonight and tomorrow, hopefully I can face and I can get through tomorrow. Uh, so I just thought I'd check in. Now I appreciate Anyone who watches this channel, I know very few people have found it worthy of their ears, uh, which I find so crazy because I feel like my perspective is so unique and the things I'm proposing are so unique that it's like, don't other people get tired of just hearing the same thing over and over the way I do? But then, <laughs> so far, I guess they just... I don't know. I guess people find whatever ways to distract themselves, to entertain themselves, to just forget about. It's, it's like it's a completely different psychology to me where because I'm just unwilling to like turn a blind eye. Like if someone's suffering, if someone's saying something like I'm listening, like like I ain't never told a fucking person. uh that I didn't want to hear what they had to say. Like, uh, I mean, I guess if someone's like been coming at me, insulting towards me in particular, I guess I, I block people based on that. And I guess there were times that I blocked people where it was just like, like, there's certain arguments that just, like, you want to talk about gun control? Like, I was just blocking you, because I've never met someone who supported gun control that I felt like I was able to reason with, and that I ever received anything other than just insults in return. And frankly, um, I don't need them to believe in gun control for gun control to be reality. Um, and a reality that I think a lot of these communists are going to run into um, if they want to take their riots and they want to spread them out into the private sector. So I speak again of reality. I don't worry if our morality is different because ultimately what's real is real regardless of what you think about it. I guess that's it. Have a good night.